All right, I think we can get started. Uh, well, first and foremost, thanks everyone for joining uh, this session. Uh, what we're going to be covering today is we're going to talk a bit about Managed Sim uh, and how it helps to protect your business uh, with uh, proactive detection and response. Uh, before we get started into the kind of the, the meat of the presentation, just a bit about me. Um, I've been in the cybersecurity uh, industry for, for over 15 years now. Um, very much sort of focused on helping people to improve their cybersecurity, finding new and innovative ways to protect businesses from very small to very large organizations. And I spent most of my career trying to help businesses and then realized that we needed to find a new way to innovate and to help materially improve people's cybersecurity. And so uh, started uh, to look at how we could do that. And that's where I guess the idea for defense.com came from. How can we take organization so that are really struggling with cybersecurity, innovate and sort of build a solution that can help solve that problem for them and, and improve that security quickly. Um, love to talk about cybersecurity, a real passion of mine. And uh, SIM has been one of those things I've been talking about for, for many, many years and seen really the evolution of SIM technologies. And so for today, we, we're going to start talking a bit about that. But first, before we do, let's start with sort of the awareness piece now what why is a sim technology so important in an organization and, and why do people need to to think about it um the more and more i think about the breaches we've seen more recently a lot of the issues still come down to how quickly can an organization spot the very early signs of of some sort of attack in order for them to deal with with that breach um most of the time it's long periods of time but i guess the question should be um what is an acceptable amount of time? And in, in my opinion, there's no acceptable period of time where an attacker should be in an environment. But the reality is, is there any way in which we can reduce the overall uh, impact of somebody having access to your systems, making the assumption at some point you may have some sort of um, breach of some kind. Now, of course, that really varies on what impact that could be uh, to the organization from um, sim simple sort of exposure of sensitive information. So somebody manages to breach a system and expose that out to the organization all the way through to full uh, full, uh, full exposure and, and full compromise of an environment all the way through to having admin level privilege which is essentially what an attacker is trying to do. Um, or, of course, in most cases these days, is to try and uh, uh, put somebody in a position where they have to pay a ransom for either some data that's been exposed or they've encrypted all the systems and they're trying to get you to pay a fine for that. So how SIM technology helps with that scenario, we'll talk about in this presentation. But the first thing is that the biggest issue I'm seeing still today is that organizations are very bad at detecting the early signs of a breach. It's normally down to some other third party that is detected. Uh, worst case scenario is your customer says, I've seen something suspicious going on. Um, have you looked into this? You look into it and it's an issue. Uh, I've seen scenarios where IT um, staff has identified like high CPU load on the system and then only to find out they've been compromised um, uh, previously and uh, an attack has been in the environment. The average time still um, being recorded and identified is around 206 days uh, is the average time for detection. One good news around this, which is not, I guess, uh, not necessarily a great, the greatest news, but um, a few years back, I'd be talking about 360 five days, you know, or long, long periods of time, much more than 206 days, but still 206 days, like I said, is, is just too much. You shouldn't shouldn't have an attacker in that environment for that long. Just think about all the information and all the chaos that could be caused by something in that environment. And also the cleanup, the containment and all that sort of stuff that comes with it when they're in the environment for that long. Which is why what we're seeing and, and one of the reasons why we wanted to do this webinar is what we're seeing with the organization we're talking to is most organizations now, 70% of these of companies are looking to sort of outsource the security, their security. And specifically in this field, generally speaking, organizations don't feel that they've got the right expertise, experience, time, capacity to be able to do uh, this, this uh, detection response. Um, without the support of somebody else, a third party organization or a tool that can help them to do that. And so that's really what we're going to talk about. Um, and certainly what we're seeing more and more is that from a compliance point of view, there is an expectation you should have some sort of, um, if not a SIM tool specifically, some way in which to monitor log data and to uh, regularly review the information that is supplied within your logs um, in order to obviously it, the 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 sort of intention of that is to make sure that you're detecting the breach uh, or a potential attack as early on as possible. 
but also we're finding that insurers have got two key things that they're looking for in an organization. Do you have some sort of um, proactive monitoring solution, some way in which to detect attacks? And also the second one tends to be, have you done a pen test? So are you effectively testing your cybersecurity uh, via some sort of manual assessment? Um, generally speaking, it's a pen test. And do you have some sort of method of identifying all the suspicious activity that might be going on in your environment and helping you to, to, to detect those things? Of course, from an organization's point of view, the benefit of doing that and making sure that you can communicate that, um, not just so that you can reduce your insurance premiums, is also to build the confidence in your customers, your employees, that you've got um, your good custodians of their data, uh, you're going to be protecting their organizations, uh, your, their organization's data, uh, whatever you may hold on them, whether that's personal information for your employees, uh, whether it's inf sensitive information right from your customers. And also from a business point of view, obviously knowing that if your systems are going down for a period of time, how quickly can you restore from that and retain those things? So the idea of today is to sort of take some of those concepts and talk a bit about it in the context of SIM and manage SIM and what that can do for your organization to protect you. So what we're going to be covering, what is managed SIMs? Just the specifics of what it is, what do they do, how do they work? Um, how do you make sure you get the most value out of these solutions? That's often the, the thing I get from customers when we're talking just in general is I think there's a general misunderstanding of, of what it can do for them and how much value they could get. Or they've had bad experience in the past, right? You've deployed a SIM technology and haven't really got the value you expected and the return on investment's not what you expected. Uh, and so you really want to understand, like, how do I make this thing actually do what I, and I expect it to be doing? And maybe, maybe there's a certain amount of resetting of expectations of what a SIM solution can do for your organization uh, needs to happen. So we'll, we'll talk a bit about that uh, in this webinar. Uh, we've got some examples of just things to expect, how it might operate from a, a SOC perspective, which is an important part of some of these technologies. It's the kind of layer on top, the people aspects of things, which I'll talk about. And then the, the last part is, of course, we want to make sure that there's some actionable stuff you can take away, use uh, as sort of top tips that can help you to actually solve some of these problems for you, whether you've already made an investment already, and hopefully these tips will help you to understand how to use it better and benefit from it. Or if you're going out there to look for a solution, what are the tips of things you can consider when you're going out to, to make that investment? All right, so let's start with what is a managed SIM solution. Well, we first need to, I guess, start with making sure we understand what a SIM solution is. Um, a SIM technology is uh, has been developed, and I'm going to I'm going to try and reduce the amount of acronyms. Unfortunately, cybersecurity is acronym hell. Uh, there is so many different acronyms out there, so I'm just going to focus on explaining it exactly how it is. Um, I will, of course. Uh, explain what the acronym means, but essentially it's a security information and event management systems is what SIM essentially stands for. But to really condense it down, what does a SIM solution do? The idea is that the SIM is your single source of all your log data. And what it's going to do is make sense of those things uh, that you're getting log data from. Um, to In order to make it consistent across all the things you get logged from, in order for it to then be able to make sense of that and generally speaking has rules to be able to detect threats and alarm you of those threats happening. Um, so the first purpose of a SIM technology is to just get data in from as many things as possible. We'll talk a bit more about how you decide on what those things are in a moment because I know that's a bit of a question we get it asked all the time like what should I be logging? Like, I don't really know I've got hundreds and hundreds of systems which things are the most important well how do I prioritize what I get in all those sorts of things. So we'll, we'll try and address those a bit later on. But first and foremost, just think of it as as much data as you can get into this platform as possible, the better context you have, the more you understand about what's going on in your environment, the better you can decide on whether th something is good or bad. And if you are the user of a SIM technology or a business looking to take on a SIM technology, it's very difficult to spot those trends of good versus bad if you don't have good information, good context. It's kind of that whatever if you put good information in you'll get good information out sort of idea which is a general term for, for most things right um of course what it's there to do is to, to identify suspicious activity not just in your network specifically but in your environments across everything that you have um again we'll sort of touch on that in a, in, in a lot more detail as we go through this and of course, the one key thing that it's supposed to do is to raise alerts and um, generally called security events. But essentially, it's saying, here's something that I've identified that looks suspicious that you should have a look at. Uh, and what it ultimately needs to do at the end of it is to enable your security team teams to be able to stop potential attacks. 
There's two sort of things we'll talk about as well, which is an indicator of attack and an indicator of compromise. Of course, the latter is the one that you want to avoid at all costs. You need to be looking for your SIM technology to detect the indicator of attack. So you can address those before it lands up turning into this indicator of compromise, which basically means you need to be in an acting and incident response plan, uh, which is what you want to ultimately don't want to get into. But of course, you want to make sure you've got that in place when should that happen. So simple as it's a software technology, generally speaking, that's going to be running in your environment, that's gathering all this log data, making sense of it, getting into a format that you can query across lots of different data sources, finding uh, weeding through all that that noise to find the things that indicate an attack. Now, what is a managed SIM? Well, traditionally, of course, SIM technologies were run by the business themselves. So if your organization buying a SIM technology, you'd be running it. You install the software, generally speaking, on a virtual machine or a server somewhere that sits in your data center or a data center somewhere, and you would have to manage it. So you'd have to maintain it, patch it. You'd have to be trained on how to set it up. Uh, there are things called correlation rules, which correlate lots of different log data uh, into an, a single event, which is in, in, inevitably turns into your alerts or your security events. And um, it's a, you know, it's a, a pretty complex problem, right? You've got to run this thing. Now, also, if you think about the scale of these things, we generate so much log data these days. There's so many different things that can generate log data. We're generating so much data just in general, um, uh, as a, uh, a you know across all things that uh, in, in humanity today. Um, there's some sort of crazy stat that suggests that we've created more data in just the last few years than we've ever created in the history of time. That's kind of a similar problem with SIM. Like your technology and systems you adopt, the things you you have in your in your companies will be generating more and more data the bigger you get, or the more people you employ, or the bigger customers you get. So these things have to be able to scale to that demand. Um, and also, it depends on how busy they are, how noisy they are, or how uh, if you get into an attack, of course, the amount of log data that you're likely to see will massively increase because all of a sudden uh, there's a lot more activity uh, outside of the normal day to day somebody logging in somebody logging out there could be all manner of different errors and all sorts of things going on in your environment that you need to be able to spot and scale to be able to support the other thing as well is with um, sim technologies is generally you have to store the data in some way so if you've got lots of log data that's being shipped to a system that will require you to have lots of storage and again as those things grow and systems start to send more data to you you've got to make sure that obviously they are able to store those systems are scaled correctly to be able to handle that and also handle the volume of log data you've got so when you look at the managed SIM side of things, generally what people are doing is saying, I don't want to run this thing anymore. I want somebody else to run it for me. And that's your managed SIM solution. So it's generally outsourced to a third party provider that runs it for you. Most of the time these days, it's a cloud service or a SaaS service. So you're just basically going to be shipping data to a third party's data center, who's then going to process this information as if you were running the solution in house. And the upside, of course, a lot of things is these things is that they're maintaining it for you and they deal with all the compliance aspects of storing the data and scaling it and dealing with all those, those headaches. Now, on top of that, what is a SOC? Because you'll generally hear a lot of these terms all kind of linked into one. SOC is your security operation center. So these are, generally speaking, the experts that know what a log is telling you, and they will be looking at that log data both reactively so when this alert gets created from a security event somebody's going to look at that and decide what they need to do with it that's going to be your SOC and also proactively going out there and looking at what we're receiving from all these systems and trying to make a decision around is there something suspicious in here that maybe a correlation rule um, or an alarm would not be able to be able to spot it needs somebody's knowledge of how this environment generally looks to understand what we need to do about it the other thing, of course, with all these things is when you think about it, everything needs to be 24 seven. If the platform falls over, so if you're running the SIM yourself, you have a SIM technology in-house, you've got it in your data center, or you've got it inside your offices and it falls over in the middle of the night, is anybody monitoring that? Because there are scenarios where if it's not up and your systems are sending log data to you, can't give the log data to the SIM product, your, your data's gone. So if you're an attacker, the best uh, the best outcome for them is if they can take your monitoring solutions down, your security products out of the mix, and especially on the SIM side, if they can take the SIM technology down, it means that you're blind to the attack. It's not going to raise alarms. It's not going to tell anybody about any of this stuff. 
Um, so you need to make, to make sure that it's up all the time and you've always got the log data so you have no blind spots. And that's why a lot of the services have, of course, not only 24-7 SOC, but 24-7 uh, network operations teams that monitor the platforms to make sure they're continually up. And if we see or if the organisation sees a gap in log data, um, then it means that we need to quickly action that, deal with it, jump on it, make sure the logs are getting in. We've got the history of the logs that maybe couldn't be shipped over uh, if it's sitting on the machine. And then that means you've got no gaps and you, you obviously can then go and investigate whether there has been any malicious activity there. One of the things that is required from a compliance perspective normally is that you're tracking for things like if somebody turns off logging, because of course, again, you've got blind spots then as to what did somebody do when that logging was turned off? Were they increasing their permissions as an administrator? Were they installing some software and then turning the, the logging back on? That's the main reason why you have this kind of 24 seven coverage and the need to make sure that there's always somebody there monitoring the system and keeping up. It's pivotal to the success of your security. That's how important a SIM solution is. And of course, the other thing that SOC will do is investigate those things, as, as mentioned, and it will contact directly with uh, the relevant customer of that SOC. Or if it's an internal security operation centre, uh, your customer might be your internal teams, your heads of department, those sorts of things. We'll be communicating, making sure that something gets done when this thing gets flagged. All right. Um, so one of the things that we generally find customers are looking for and the reasons why they might look for a managed sim solution over doing it themselves is do they feel like they've got the capacity the right people in the business to be able to um, address the, the the problems that we that fa you face with both investigating attacks and of course managing these systems so what are the things you really need to think about and whether you're in a good position to do this yourself and what are the kind of key decision making that comes up with whether you want to run a sim solution manage it or if you just want to completely outsource and have a sock involved in the process at the same time as well really comes down to these these key things one is, do you have a result, the right resource to monitor these things 24 seven, not just the log data, as I mentioned, but also the platform? Do you have the budget um, to cover all the overheads? Like I say, if something starts scaling, have you got have you been able to budget to understand what that scaling looks like? And can you manage that yourself? Like, can you buy new hardware to quickly scale? Um, have you thought about those, considered those things? Uh, in most cases, when you're looking at a, a SIM technologies or managed SIM technologies, they have some sort of measure to understand how you pay. And that normally comes down to one of one of a few things. Um, and the, the the kind of best model I've seen, or, or maybe I'm being a bit biased to the model we've taken, which is that if you start sending tons of log data to a SIM platform, you don't want to be penalised and charged more money um, to get that log data in. You almost want to go the other way because the more log data you have, the, the better knowledge you have of whether you've been compromised or not. Whereas if you're paying by the amount of data you receive, you might want to you might avoid that to not to cost you more money. So if you go to a technology where they've got this other approach where they charge for every log that you receive or a volume of data you receive, um, you're going to be paying more money for that. And of course, if you run it yourself, you might feel like, well, actually, the costs are all in-house. What happens if you start hitting thresholds where you can't store data anymore or you can't process it? How do you account for that? How do you budget to make sure that you can bring more hardware on to kind of handle that problem? The, the managed SIM option means that you don't have to worry about that. And of course, if you've got a managed SIM provider where they're not focused on um, the volume of data you're sending and costing you more money, then of course you can you can make sure that you're confident in that you can receive as much data as you need without incurring additional fees. So think about budgeting, think a bit about like how do you manage and scale those things if you're going to run it yourself um, and how do you handle that. One reason why organizations feel like they want to do it themselves is they want to have the control over the system. Like they actually have their own technical teams that want to be able to use the platform to maybe do a certain amount of their own investigation or maybe they've got other use cases that they want to use the, the SIM solution for, like generally debugging and looking at logs is a pretty good example of how you might want to use a SIM technology. Um, so sometimes you might be um, avoiding um, uh, outsourcing that because you feel like you're going to lose that control. Um, with the right vendors, you will still get a certain amount of control, but of course, inevitably, you will lose something um, because you can't scale a, a managed SIM solution by giving everybody infinite levels of control over those platforms. Typically, it just doesn't necessarily work that way. So you, you may lose a certain amount of control, but that, means, that doesn't mean that you're going to get any worse service. In actual fact, obviously, it should improve the service you get. You should be able to detect more things. You should be more confident of the quality of that service because you've got experts running it, managing it, maintaining it, adding new rules, adding new correlation rules. You've got expertise tuning it to make sure you can get the best value out of the solution that you can. And the last thing, of course, is just do you have the time to, to manage these things? Um, because they are 
they are problematic in the sense that you've always got to keep an eye on them. Like I said, I've kind of touched on it a lot already, but ultimately you've got to handle that whole workload. There's lots of data coming in, spikes of activity, traffic, things going down, things coming up. You know, sometimes it's a question mark of it has we just stopped receiving log data because that machine just hasn't got any logs to share anymore. Um, relatively rare that or are you batching up log data and so something might look like it's gone down you go and spend a ton of time trying to investigate what's going on and the reality is that it's it's perfectly normal that's just how the system sends logs so if you can't if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all those things then it's probably better to look at sort of more of a managed service where they're going to handle a lot of that headache for you and take a lot of the pain away and you can just focus purely on when something gets raised with you as an organization you can deal with it you can handle it because the provider gives you everything you need to to make a decision and deal with it in the business and you need that from a managed sim perspective you need somebody who can then go off and deal with it because most of the time as a vendor of a service you can't you've got no control over the service that are running uh, on the other end uh, threat detection. So let's just talk a bit about what is the sim going to give you. Like I've already touched on, there's the highlight the indicators of attack. That's the bit where the attackers are going to hit you with a um, I'm poking around, looking at stuff. The earlier you spot that, the quicker you can reduce the chance of it becoming a compromise. But of course, if you do get compromised, you want to make sure you've got all the relevant log data to see what's happened. That's why I say get as much data in as you can. And then you need to store it away, because if you do get compromised, you need at least a year's worth of data in theory. Um, to be able to go back and re retrospectively look at things like, is this normal behavior? Have we seen this before? Um, looking for ab abnormal information. Most compliance standards require you to have at least six months worth of log data readily available to you um, uh, in order for you to be able to see what's happened in that period actively available. So whether that's you can get access to it if you're asked for it or whether you've got an interface to be able to see it. Um, Generally speaking, most organizations will have a, at least want to see at least 90 days worth of log data, and then you've got the ability to extend to get access to it or immediately quickly access the data. How we work you know, with the defense one is give you 90 days worth of log data to see immediately, and then you've got 12 months where you can go back into an archive. Of course, store it for as long as you can, really, because there's always good evidence information you can use for the longer you store that log data. But that's more in an instant response perspective where it looks like you have been compromised, you need to enact that, you need to go and investigate further, you need more data than you've got, generally speaking, available in the platforms. And then, of course, what will your security need, team need to do? Or if you're outsourcing, you've got a SOC provider, they'll be needing to do things like proactively investigating, hunting for new things. That's generally triggered by threat intelligence data. So if something new comes out to say there's this new attack that might affect your business, you ought to go and hunt to see if somebody's trying to exploit that in your business and solve that problem. And of course, the other thing that your team will need to do or the SOC team would be doing typically is identifying the severity and escalating appropriately. Like if this if this is a really high severity incident, you want to get the right people on the in the company to start actually actioning it. You might need the IT team to disable user accounts, reset passwords. You might need them to um, deal with um, patches, updates, all those sorts of good things. The other thing as well is, unfortunately, there's always going to be a certain amount of false positives that you have to handle uh, because some of these tools, they're machines, right? At the end of the day, they can make mistakes, which is why you often need people to look at these things for you. Coverage. I've already mentioned this. What do you really need to get in? Now, there's a concept of high fidelity log data I'll talk about in the next slide and low fidelity log data. But generally speaking, get as much information as you can in. The key focuses tend to be things like getting your system level logs in, network logs from firewalls, switches, all those sorts of things. Any security investments you've made, endpoint protection products, um, anything like uh, application firewalls or anything that like that is really useful information to bring in. They're sort of high fidelity. And then things like audit logs, anything like cloud logs, application logs, generally speaking, you've got really juicy information that are very valuable. And there will be rules, correlation rules that can be used to um, correlate all these different things happening at once from security logs to system logs to network logs, application logs, and then make sense of it and then raise an alarm to you saying this security log said this, the application log has supported the fact this is a problem. And I've correlated these two things together with my rules engine and you need to do something about it. And they raise those things up. So my best advice is get as much coverage as you can and then turn on the relevant rules that you could that ba are based on the things that you have log data coming in from, like the security events from your AWS, for example, or your Microsoft accounts, that sort of thing. Now, what's the difference between high fidelity and low fidelity? Um, essentially, a high fidelity is the log already tells you that something bad has happened. 
So this generally comes into action where I say there's an application firewall that's in place that's blocking known attacks against your application or intrusion detection systems that have got rules that can see that somebody's trying something bad to try and compromise your system. We will, uh, they will be high fidelity. That's proving that we already seen an attack. We know there's bad things going on. Generally speaking, the reason why you want to pull in low fidelity log data is just the general day to day things like somebody logged into a system. That doesn't mean that something's been compromised. It just means that somebody's logged in. But when you're investigating a high fidelity event, the low fidelity information can be used to to correlate and confirm whether the behavior is good or bad. And also you're generally speaking, wanting to combine those two things together in order to, to detect and raise more significant threats. Um, so you need both really, but the more you have to bring the early warning signs into a SIM to then create the, the correlation and to do the investigation, the better really. To give you a couple of, I guess, scenarios we see quite frequently, um, and some well, uh, more frequently, I think you would see is things like impossible travel. We see these, these things all the time. Just an obvious sign that somebody is trying to log into a system that is uh, different to their typical activity or is impossible for them to be able to achieve. So let's say that somebody was trying to log in from the US, and then all of a sudden you see them trying to log in from the UK. Now, what that's trying to identify is not whether they're on a VPN and then have dropped off the VPN. That's often where you get a false positive. It's more a case of where you've got organizations where um, somebody has had their account compromised and the attacker is coming from a location that's not normal to their location or is impossible for them to log in from those two separate locations. So that's kind of the impossible travel one, pretty typical. Um, lots of um, people and organizations are now investigating um, user account, login account information, mainly because attackers are doing things like social engineering, stealing people's credentials and then logging in from um, bizarre or abnormal or a, a typical kind of locations to what they would expect them to. And that's a good indicator to say your accounts have been compromised. On the other side of the fence, there are some more custom things, and this is where you do need to look at your vendors of what they can provide and what the service can give you around a level of customization. Because false positives are generally triggered because you can't make it custom to your organization and it will flag things that are obviously not problems for your business, but could be for somebody else's. Because these rules, like I say, are generally de developed to be broad and allow to support many different organizations. But in an example we've got here, one of our customers spoke to us about uh, they've got specific, very sensitive locations of, of, of their organization where there are sensitive files that if they get read by somebody other than their end administrator, or sometimes it looks like an administrator account is touching areas where they don't normally, they want to be flagged and they want to know about it. So kind of two very different examples. One is a fairly common thing we see in lots of different, lots of organizations, and the other is a bit more custom. There's a custom need to do something specific, and that's why you want a sort of flexible provider of a service or a flexible solution that allows you to adapt what's already in the platform today. So how do you get value out of your SIM solution? I've touched on a lot of these things already, but the key thing I always look at are these five things. So first is really understanding what you're monitoring in your environment, making sure that that will help you to protect your systems. I generally say work back from where you know that it's really sensitive information. So if you know where the attackers are going to go after, or they might compromise your organization, that will enable you to work backwards and make sure you're getting all the logs from all the systems that they would have to go past or use to get access to that data. Understanding the day-to-day -day inter interaction uh, with, your, um, with your systems uh, and how systems work and your providers, your services will help you to understand what is going on in your environment. So kind of knowing what normal is, kind of baselining your infrastructure is quite crucial. So having a profile built that you can provide to the provider of your service will help to give you the best service possible. Also making sure that um, you've got that high, good, good balance between high fidelity and low fidelity data. It's quite important. And do you have the right cyber expertise and knowledge in the business to start doing this investigation work? If you haven't, then my suggestion would you, you start looking at a managed SIM with a SOC layered on top. The last part is the SIM is crucial to incident response. The first thing that anybody does, even if it's not using SIM solution, when you're doing an incident response exercise is, can I have a look at some log data? Because there's often indicators in there that will help you to decide on what needs to happen next. And then on top of that, then you go into the detail of full-on investigations where you're taking images from systems and doing all those good things. So here are my top five tips. So the first thing is to perform a risk assessment to really understand where your priorities are. What are the things that you want to make sure you're, you're protecting yourself from? Is it that you've got really sensitive information 
that you want to make sure that the never gets leaked. And if that's the case, knowing where that data is and knowing whether you've got the right log data to be able to detect that sort of stuff is crucial. And then understanding what the priority is on that. That then helps you decide on what your escalation is, because a lot of the times you don't, we, well, especially for us, we don't want to be raising, raising events with customers and waking them up at three in the morning only for them to say, oh, that's normal. That happens all the time. That's really frustrating. There's also a notion of something called alert fatigue, where if you don't set your solutions up properly and the priority are uh, not set correctly, people will just ignore the alerts. And that's really going to, is a bad is, is a bad situation. People just ignoring a SIM solution, thinking that it's just misconfigured, leads to a position where um, people just ignore it and it's a false sense of security. Um, obviously, knowing where the sensitive data is and going through that risk, uh, that the risk assessment process and making sure you understand all that is critical. And then, of course, making sure you're reducing your exposure as much as possible. Uh, so if you can, obviously, don't put a big target on your back. Reduce what you when you're exposed. It limits what you have to monitor typically, and of course, reduces the chance of you being compromised. Have an instant response plan. It doesn't matter if you've got the best managed SIM solution in the world and you've got everything coming in. If nobody knows what to do when you actually receive an event or worst case, uh, a, um, a a compromise activity or an indicator of compromise, and they're all running around with their hair on fire, not sure know what need, they need to do. You're not going to deal with that incident very quickly. So making sure it's well trained, well understood. All the right people are involved, you contain it, eradicate, and then recover is crucial. Step one always is containment. How do you stop this thing from spreading? How do you stop uh, malicious act, uh, malicious or data being exfiltrated out of the system is crucial. And then you can take your time to deal with the incident and then remediate and, and handle the, the bigger problem, which is to remediate uh, the overall problem. Remediate is not the same thing in all cases. Some people say, I just want to be able to remediate the problem. Sometimes that can be as easily as adding a, a blocking rule in. But some of the more advanced attacks, you need to work all the way back through, well, how did it get in the first place? Was it a phishing attack? OK, well, how do we really remediate that? It could then be that they exploited some vulnerability inside your organization. Well, how do we remediate that? It's often not as straightforward as just block them at the firewall. Everything's good. It often needs to be a lot more work done after that. And the last part for me is just hardening systems, both your servers, your workstations. If you harden them, it's making it very difficult for the attackers to exploit them in the first place. And then that enables you to better understand when really bad things are happening. You know that it's somebody's got through all of these great controls. Thinking defense in depth is the key thing here. Sometimes you've got security investments. You think, well, I don't need to worry about logging information from these systems because they're protected by this application firewall or something along those lines. What if that fails? Do you have the right information in the technology you've got, like the SIM solution, to be able to see whether it failed or it didn't? Um, again, you might have a false sense of security, so keeping an eye on those things are critical. So in summary, SIM solution will help you to detect these potential security threats by collecting and analyzing all the various bits of information from your IT infrastructure. Managed SIM will provide you with an organization that helps you to really get the best out of that technology, give you all the latest updates, the latest detection rules, and will support you on all those sorts of things with seasoned professionals that know how to scale these things to get the best out of it. Um, it's, you can become an expert in these technologies, but they are ever evolving, quite complex beasts. So my suggestion would be maybe to think about going down that road. Um, and also with a managed SIM solution, you will enable you to get better coverage, better threat detection, obviously prevent, help to prevent the, the breach things, which ultimately we want. And of course, most of the time they're helping you to stay compliant because they're doing all the hard work for you. So when you have somebody come in and do an audit, you've got all the right things in place and they're working effectively. Ultimately, you need to make the assumption that bad things are going to happen and you want to be able to respond to it quickly. And that's what your SIM solutions are there to do. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an understanding of a bit more about what you want to, what a SIM and a managed SIM and what a SOC gives you and the benefits of these solutions and also some tips and some stuff to think about and uh, help you on your way to making the right choices around these technologies and how you deploy them. If you want more information about this, we are here to help you contact us on these mechanisms. And of course, we will continue to share more and more information about these sorts of services in the future. So if you have some things that you want to learn or want to know more about and you think we can help you out, send us over uh, a communication. We'd love to do uh, more content that will help improve people's cybersecurity. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. We really appreciate you joining this and we look forward to hearing your feedback and seeing you on the next one. Thanks very much.